welcome to Somerville Neighborhood News. The Broadway Bridge between Ball Square and Magoon Square will close for construction for approximately one year beginning March 22nd. The Broadway Bridge will remain closed through March 2020 with detours in place for motorists, cyclists, pedestrians, and for the bus routes 80 and 89. This is the first in a series of three 8 to 12 month closures planned for 2019. Closures on Washington Street and Medford Street will follow in April and July, respectively. Wider bridges will be constructed at each location to accommodate the new light rail service, among other improvements. In addition to these bridge closures, for six months, eastbound traffic into Union Square on Somerville Ave will be detoured, impacting motorists, pedestrians, cyclists, and bus routes in that affected area. With me in the studio today to talk about these closures and traffic impacts uh, are Viola Augustin, who is the GLX project liaison. Welcome to the studio. Thank you. Jesse Moose, who is the construction liaison and compliance manager. Welcome. Thanks for having us. And Daniel Amelin, who is the project manager utilities. Thank you for having us. All right. So let's get to it. Um, Daniel, can you provide us with an overview of the construction projects, maybe going into detail a little more on, on what I talked about, and uh, maybe how the timeline was set up for the Union Square project? Sure. So our, our Somerville Ave project, uh, it's a three-year project, uh, roughly estimated around $50 million. It's one of the largest projects the city's seen uh, for public infrastructure. And the purpose of this project is bifold. I'm sure many residents in and around Union Square and Somerville Ave know of and remember uh, the flooding that occurs here during especially wet, rainy seasons. Uh, in addition, a lot of our public utilities under the road are over 100 years old. So the purpose of this project is to provide uh, more than enough drainage and to replace a lot of these old, old utilities, uh, really from Union Square all the way down to McGrath Highway. Uh, the project was set up on a, on a three-year timeline, uh, kind of based between contractual obligations within the city. Uh, the city limits their contracts with consultants and contractors up to three years. The amount of work we have to do for this project would honestly take a lot longer than three years. Uh, so one thing that the city has done is waived a winter moratorium regulation, which prevents work from happening between November and April. Uh, and allowed this project to continue year-round every day of the year for the next three years. Uh, that being said, we just started implementing one of our first closure phases here in Union Square. Uh, as you mentioned, that's anticipated to last approximately six months. Mm -hmm. We're looking sometime mid-July as a quote-unquote finish date before we move to a new location. Uh, the, again, the, a lot of the work involved with this is putting in a new 14-foot wide stormwater box culvert uh, which will essentially separate drainage from sewage in one of our uh, sewer pipes in the road. And that work is going to extend really the whole length of Somerville Lab from Union all the way down to Target. Uh, it's a massive undertaking mm -hmm. with massive structures and you know we're coming up on a, on a year uh, from when we started so uh, at the moment we're looking forward to the next two years worth of work and uh, upon completion we'll have brand new utilities, brand new streets, brand new uh, landscaping, and hopefully uh, it finishes up within our three-year period. And uh, Viola, how about the uh, Broadway Bridge closure? Can you provide some additional details on that? Sure. I mean, talk about massive project. <laughs> Obviously, the um, Broadway closure, Broadway Bridge closure is part of the <clears throat> Green Line Extension project. Mm -hmm. And um, different from the Union Square one, this is not a city project. It's a project that's run by Massachusetts Department of Transportation. So we don't have direct influence on the construction schedule and mm -hmm. the details. Obviously, we work really closely with the MBTA and their GLXC, the design build entity that is actually constructing the Green Line. So all of that said, we are super excited to have the Green Line come through Somerville. And we feel like we should always remind ourselves of that mm -hmm. and not only talk about the headaches we will come across with the bridge closure. And um, as you had mentioned, the Broadway Bridge will be closed for an entire year, which is the longest period. All the other bridges will be mostly six months maximum. And the reason for the Broadway, Broadway Bridge closure 
taking so long, it is necessary to widen the entire bridge and take out all the existing abutment and wing walls. So it's a much bigger project than most of the bridge closures where you just take the top off and then put the top back. Mm. So that is one of the reasons. And it's also the reason why there is not a one lane detour or, um, or even a pedestrian bridge because the span is just so wide. So yeah, you mentioned the pedestrians also are being detoured as well. Yes. Um, and wh where, where can people find information about these detours? So the um, MBTA has a website, mass.gov slash GLX, and they have all the maps there for pedestrians, for the vehicles, and for the bus detours. You should all find that there. And the Somerville website also provides information, somerville.gov slash GLX, somervillema.gov slash GLX. So um, one of the website, websites should provide you plenty of information with all the detours. To further expand on, on outreach, uh, Jesse, um, how, can you talk a little bit about the community engagement that is, uh, that's occurring and uh, that will go on through? Sure. Through these uh, projects. I can talk about definitely a little more about some of the lab. Sure. So Dan and I kind of came onto the project around the same time where we were told what the project was and we told about what the outreach was already. Mm -hmm. My job is really to inform businesses in the Union Square what's happening and how it's going to affect them travel wise, how it's going to affect if there's a water shut off, how it'll affect them. So I basically just kind of went door to door and started talking to all of them, uh, getting their feedback, getting their contact information. Um, basically letting them know that I'm their point person. If there's some sort of issue, you're going to contact me directly. Um, I know that economic development has done something very similar for the Ball Square and Magoon Square businesses, but I definitely focus more on Somerville Ave. Um, we also had public meetings. Uh, we also had Resistat meetings, Ward 2 and Ward 3. Uh, actually, last year's Resistat schedule focused almost entirely on construction going on the city, talking about uh, Somerville Ave project as well as like the Pearl Street project in uh, Ward 1, but everything was definitely focused on GLX. So we're trying to really get the information out. We have a construction newsletter that goes out weekly, uh, that lets you know about detours and upcoming work. So we're really trying to over-communicate the construction. And we were talking uh, when you were here earlier this week that you're, you're actively watching social media to, right. to so pay attention to people's So we pay attention to <laughs> Reddit, we pay attention to Twitter, we pay attention to Facebook. We want to know how this is impacting you and how we can make it better. So if you look at uh, the Somerville Ave detour that went in place on the 19th, we got immediate feedback that people were not going the detour route. We wanted them to go uh, from Somerville Ave eastbound to Bow Street to Bow Street back to Somerville Ave then go down Dane Street. They were not following that. So we got a lot of feedback from people live on Warren Ave, Columbus, and we were able to take immediate action to rectify it and find new ways with just signage and just, I don't know, maybe like information with the police on how we want the detour to run. Mm. And so far, I'm working. Good. <laughs> Hope it continues to work. Me too. Uh, <laughs> um, let's talk a little bit about the specific bus routes that might be impacted by each of these projects. Um, uh, Daniel, can you talk about which bus routes will be affected by the uh, Somerville Ave yep. detour? Uh, currently, we have, with our ongoing Union Square work zone, uh, we've actually had to work quite extensively with the MBTA uh, in regards to the 87 inbound and outbound uh, route, as well as the 85 inbound and the CT2 uh, outbound routes. All of these uh, routes travel through Union Square and it took several months of, of trying to figure out, you know, uh, what ancillary streets do we have that are capable of, of holding these buses, you know, in a, in a safe manner and uh, trying not to extend the amount of wait time between stops. Mm -hmm. uh, so that being said, with the help of uh, our colleagues here at the city, we were able to come up with a plan uh, to really kind of not, not necessarily eliminate some bus stops, but uh, those that were impacted by construction uh, that folks would otherwise have a hard time getting to. Uh, we were able to work with the MBTA, combine other existing stops, and uh, really, you know, working with the MBTA to update not only their website, but their apps, and, and getting flyers out into the neighborhoods mm. uh, for folks who may not have access to, 
you know, some of these other options. Uh, so one thing that the MBTA helped us with was actually putting our, our detour maps that were generated by the city uh, out for publication. They were also able to put up flyers at some of these uh, impacted bus stops, directing folks to our new temporary relocated stops. Uh, so far, it's, it's been helpful. It's been working. We haven't received uh, any complaints you know, about uh, struggling to find these stops or, or access uh, to each of these. But again, this is just what's happening now. As we progress with work through the next two years, uh, we'll have plenty more impacts to several different routes, you know, further east on Somerville Ave. Mm -hmm. uh, and similarly, we'll, we'll take the same steps and as much advance effort as we can with the MBTA to really try to, you know, nail down these detour routes and make sure that ridership isn't uh, falling off and, you know, the MBTA can keep their, their travel times between stops, you know, as close to normal as possible. It's not just the, uh, the Somerville Ave uh, bus, bus routes that will be affected because there's other bus routes that come through Union like the 87 and the 91. Yes. Um, do you know what the impact of those routes might be? Uh, like I said, when, when we progress with work... You'll have a better idea of that? East. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's, it's, it's really working with our contractor to, mm. to, to really nail down where we're going to be next with as much notice as possible. Uh, so that we can work to, to try to implement these changes well in advance of you know, when they actually happen. Uh, so that way we can give us ourselves enough time to, to notify all riders of each of these routes and, and several others that occur further east uh, towards McGrath mm. uh, to really minimize and, and eliminate any sort of confusion or uh, any negative impacts that it otherwise would have. So uh, at this time, I don't have those routes uh, available to, to tell you, only yeah. because you know it's it's a work in progress. Our sure. schedule's fluid, and uh, as soon as you know we kind of figure out the next steps, I can come back to you and, and really provide a more definitive answer for you. All right, and the uh, the bus routes along Broadway, um, we already talked that that the whole bridge is going to be mm -hmm. closed, and so they are going to be detoured. Yes, um, definitely. Can you can you provide some specifics about about sure about yeah. that? Very much like Dan described, um, there was an extensive public outreach process even before the routes were decided on, mm -hmm. and um, some feed pushback to to um, not go through some of the smaller residential areas, which resulted in a larger detour. So um, for the AD between Arlington Center and Leechmere, the rerouting will go up Main Street. That will be um, coming from Leechmere towards Arlington. It will go up Main Street, then cross George Street and go down back um, College Avenue to um, back to Boston Avenue. And that's the same in the other direction. Mm. And that's for the 80 and then the 89 from Clarendon um, to, I am going to flip now, <laughs> 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 to Sullivan. Um, that bus tour will go down Cedar Street, then Highland, back up um, Holland Avenue to Broadway. And the same in the other direction. The other thing I'd like to mention is that the city will also offer a shuttle service to, um, for pedestrians for the, both the Broadway, Broadway Bridge closure and the Washington Bridge closure. And we're working with vendors. We've um, selected one, and the actual details we're working out right now. But hopefully they will start around the bridge closure, but definitely the beginning of April. And can we talk a little bit about the community path? Sure. Um, and it's going to be one of the, the end results of all this construction. Yes, um, again. How is that proceeding? <laughs> yeah, something that we're very excited about because yeah. it wasn't a given, mm -hmm. even when it was decided to proceed with the Green Line extension. So choosing this design-build construction um, entity, they thought they could accommodate us for, for the community path, and um, it's going to be great. It's going to be extending from where it ends now, Lowell Street, mm -hmm. Um, along the railroad corridor on the southeast side, and then um, at Brick Bottom, in about, in about that area, it will go up a bridge and then end up at Cambridge Crossings, which then leads um, to a connection to North End. Wow. So that will connect Boston all the way to Somerville and then up? Eventually, yeah. Continuing. The, the, the actual extension for the Green Line project will end at Cambridge Crossing. Oh, wow. But then the development that goes through North Point 
um, I think will continue that. And there's already a connection through that little bridge over to North End oh, very Station, nice. more or less. So it'll be worth it. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, how can the how can the community voice their concerns? Um, you know, during this process. So as always, you know, the city has a very robust three one one center. Uh, definitely start there by calling in. Um, your call will get taken and then put to the correct department on how it can work with. We also have um, an email address, the construction at silverlightme.gov. This goes to both the communications department and the engineering office. Uh, then myself, I'm going to look at it. We are able to kind of see how we can adjust things to help people. Um, those are probably the best ways. You can also call me. I'm not going to put my phone number up here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, or email me. Um, but we're really good at getting feedback and acting on it. Mm -hmm. I've made the joke the other day that we are the Navy SEALs, not SEALs and Crofts. So <laughs> we get it done. Okay. Because, I mean, that we have to really focus on uh, not just, you know, cars getting around, but also public safety. It's really important to us. Right. Right. Um, and is there is there anything else that you want to touch on, whether it be, you know, the the results of all this construction or anything that you want to communicate um, to summer villains as as they embark on this, you know, what potentially frustrating process? Um, I mean, most importantly, gratitude. I mean, I am a summer resident. I care about the city deeply, and I've lived here for 11 years, and we've never gone through something level of construction like this. Uh, as the mayor said, we're doing five years of infrastructure, or 50 years worth of infrastructure in five years. Uh, so really just the gratitude to the city uh, is how they support this and understand the greater good of what will come from this. Yeah, yeah. You and I were, we were talking earlier in the week and that phrase, that, that question came up, the, um, you know, the five years of infrastructure, uh, 50 years, years of infrastructure years. improvements in five years. Um, could that timeline have been expanded a little more? Did it have to be five years? So it's really, it's multiple projects happening at the same time. Mm -hmm. So the Summer Lab project that, you know, Dan's in charge of, that had five years of development prior to even hitting construction. The Green Line, 15 years? So it just kind of happened at the same time. That they're dovetailing. Yeah. Right and now. luckily the city has staffed up to handle this, you know. Uh, both of these people are new employees have come on. I've worked with the city for a while, but I'm new in this role. Uh, we've added new people in communications just to handle these projects. And I hope we're doing well. All right. I think, I think that's as good a place to leave it as any. Um, hopefully, as this um, process continues and as the additional bridge closures occur, um, I would invite all of you back to, with, with updates and anything else that, that you've, you've seen um, happen with this first phase of bridge closures and as the Union Square project continues, um, hope you can come back and talk to us. Love to. Yeah. Thank you, Dave. All right. Thank you. Great. Thank you, you so much. Thank you.